The Prime Minister of Britain, Boris Johnson, is in deep, deep trouble. The proximate reason for the trouble that Boris Johnson is in need not detain us for long, for it is merely a cipher for several other currents that are running through British politics and through the ruling Conservative Party, which has been in power, either in coalition or absolute power, now for 12 years, with at least two years still to go before the next general election. That's a long time. Boris Johnson is not what people say he is. He, with his exotic lineage involving the United States, New York, Turkey, Russia, et al., is no kind of traditional British white supremacist. Neither is he, as some on the left claim, maybe even here today, a hard right politician leading a hard right political party and government. As a matter of fact, Boris Johnson is a liberal. As a matter of fact, he's a licentious liberal of the most extreme kind. He's lived his entire life not caring about who he hurt upset, betrayed, not caring for any difficulties that he, with his own behaviour, has led himself into. There are a litany of families of Boris Johnson, not just his own families, but his, how shall I put it, intervention into the lives of other people's families. Champagne, cocaine, Cannabis. He has led the, the life of a 19th century English public schoolboy, a kind of cross between Billy Bunter and Flashman. Look them up if you're not familiar with them. He is a liberal. There is no polar bear he wouldn't hug, no green cause he wouldn't embrace no gender or sexual cause that he will not hoist the rainbow flag for. So he's not a white supremacist and he's not hard right. In my view, he's not even a conservative at all. And that is one of the problems that he is facing. He's not a conservative at all. On tax and spend, he's spending public money like a drunken sailor with far more abandon than any Labour Chancellor would do. His one saving grace for the right of his party, the Thatcherites in his party, is that after a great deal of equivocation, I mean the night before a great deal of equivocation, came down on the side of Brexit. And unlike his predecessor, Theresa May, actually got Brexit over the line. But that's a wasting asset, especially as he hasn't actually grasped the power that Brexit gives him to strike an independent course in foreign policy, in trade deals, in Latin America, for example. Almost all the trade deals remain still to be done. He hasn't grasped the power that is now his, according to Brexit, to deal with the arrival on the southern coasts of England of some 1,000 to 2,000 people every single week who then go on to be housed indeterminately at a price of £75 per head in hotels for potentially many years to come, maybe even for always. Try getting a hotel in the Midlands or the north of England now. You will not. They're closed for usual business because the profitable business is in the refugees and the asylum seekers. So Boris Johnson is in trouble because he's not conservative enough for some of his fellows and he's too Brexit for many of the others. Now, he faced a no-confidence motion. He won it, but he didn't win it well, despite all the protestations to the contrary.
He had more votes against him as a percentage of his parliamentary party than Theresa May had when she had a, a vote of no confidence tabled against her and she was out within six months. When I myself was in Parliament with one of the guests here today, John Major triggered his own vote of confidence and he had fewer people against him than Boris Johnson that did recently and we know what happened to him. In 1997, he went down to a landslide defeat at the hands of soon-to-be Sir Tony Blair. These are my views. I summarise them thus. I believe that Boris Johnson will hold on because his opponents in his own party have no leader and they have no programme. When Mrs Thatcher faced the challenge of Michael Heseltine, although Heseltine didn't eventually win, he was quite obviously a leader. And he had a programme which was to break from the Thatcherite economic model that his predecessor had fashioned and ruled Britain for a decade with. So without a challenger, without an alternative programme, Boris Johnson is probably here until the next general election. Their question is, will he then face the same fate as John Major? Oh.